Welcome once again to Lato's Law. Here's Steve Lato. Chris sent me a story. I said, Steve, check this out. It's from lawandcrime.com, but it's actually been widely reported. But I believe that this version of the story is the first one to hit the news, so I'm going to go with this one. Adam Klasfeld wrote it. Delaware residents challenged city's impound and scrap scheme as an unconstitutional private racket. And that's pretty much what it sounds like. Delaware's most populous city touted a supposedly cost-free method of towing cars, allowing private companies to keep and scrap people's cars. Two Wilmington residents challenged that system as fundamentally unconstitutional in a federal lawsuit asking a judge to put an end to that system and make them whole for the cars that were lost in the process. Wilmington hired private towing companies to run the municipal impound system, according to the lawsuit that's been filed in federal court. However, in lieu of monetary payment, the city contractually empowered the private towing companies to keep and scrap people's cars. As a result, the towing company scrapped thousands of cars without compensating owners, In the end, the city gets its municipal impound program for free. The tow companies make money by confiscating a large portion of the cars they tow, and vehicle owners lose their cars. And there is a concept in the Constitution that says that you shouldn't be deprived of, I don't know, life, liberty, property, without due process. And due due process requires a couple things. One of which is that you have to be notified of what's going on. You have to have an opportunity to respond to what's going on if it affects you. And it also needs to be fair on some level. It's got to be fair. I I understand that these are highfalutin concepts that the people in Delaware might not understand, but there actually is supposed to be some level of due process here. So the lawyers at the Institute of Justice, Institute for Justice, an Arlington, Virginia-based nonprofit, Describe the system as a racket in a press release. Uh, the complaint does not allege racketeering. However, their lawyers, um, uh, the two people who uh, brought this action, whose names it's being brought under, claim that the system violated their rights and left them helpless without transportation. One of them said, when they took my vehicle, it hindered me from being able to get around. I have a bad back. I can't do a lot of walking. I needed that vehicle as my pride and joy. She owned a 2005 Hyundai XG350, which was worth a little bit over $4,000. The other man who is mentioned as a plaintiff is a 73-year-old retiree, and he was in a similar situation when he lost his 2002 Dodge Ram van, which was valued a little over $4,000. It's my only means of transportation, he said, and without that, I felt almost helpless. But really... While we're talking about the fact they lost their vehicles, the question is, what did you lose your vehicle over? And that's where this really falls apart. They've sued the city and two companies, the two towing companies, in federal court. And one of them says that her ordeal began when authorities ticketed her car six times within nine days, even though her car was legally parked. So she says, look, the car was legally parked and it got ticketed. So you'd think you can go to court and fight the legality of those tickets. That's what courts are for, I think. I I mean, I'm an attorney, practicing law for 30 years, taught law school for 10, and I'm thinking that you can fight tickets in court. I'm not, I'll double check. I'll I'll consult my friends. (laughs) While her appeal to tickets was pending, defendants towed her car and refused to release it unless she paid the city $320. When she couldn't afford to do that within 30 days, they scrapped her car and kept the entire value for themselves, even though the car's value far exceeded the ticket debt of $320. Worse, they didn't put that money towards the value of her parking tickets, so she lost her car, and they say, by the way, you still owe $320. So the implication here is that they tow your vehicle because you violated the law. They scrap your vehicle to pay for the tow, but you still got to take care of what happened over here. And so presumably the cost to tow your vehicle magically is equal to the exact value of the scrap value of your car, which is absurd. Uh, The second of the two people I told you about concedes that he had a petty traffic violation, but says that having his car scrapped for that doesn't make sense. Uh, He didn't move his car from its parking spot in time, so defendants towed it. He paid the ticket. But they refused to release his vehicle unless he paid $910 for towing and presumably storage. It can't cost $900 to tow a car. I used to drive a tow truck, I know. 
Uh, because he couldn't afford to pay the ransom, defendants scrapped his car and kept the entire value for themselves. According to the lawsuit, these two are not the only people this has happened to. In 2020, the city and the towing companies towed 2,551 cars and kept 987 of them, which is, according to their math, 38% of the vehicles they tow, they scrap. 38%. Uh, Wilmington has taken cars without any kind of procedural protections, holding them for ransom, and then refusing even to credit the value of the car toward the supposed ticket debt, according to the senior attorney Rob Johnson at the Institute for Justice. Uh, No private debt collector could ever get away with that. The city doesn't get extra leeway to take private property just because it's the government. To the contrary, we should be holding the government to a higher standard. You'd think so. And the government should also know the law. So they demand the return of their cars or their fair market value if they've been scrapped. The legal team also seeks an injunction blocking the practice as a violation of the Fourth Amendment, protections against unreasonable searches and seizures, and the 14th Amendment due process guarantees as brought from the 5th. Wilmington's law department did not immediately respond to a telephone press inquiry. Now, some people are going to say, Steve, it seems to me that there is some theory in the law where if your vehicle gets towed and you don't recover, I'm, I, I'm acting right now, this is my meaningful look where I'm f- being thoughtful, okay? That's my thoughtful look. I'm not, I'm not looking at anything over here. Over, I'm being thoughtful. Isn't there something in the law that says that if your vehicle gets towed and you don't pay the bill, that they do get to dispose of your car? Something very, very faintly in the darker recesses of my cobwebbed brain. I seem to recall that. Isn't there some? Yes, there is. Yes, there is. If your vehicle gets legitimately towed, you may have to pay the towing bill. If you are supposed to pay a towing bill legally and you don't pay the towing bill, the towing company can claim a lien on the vehicle to cover the cost of the towing and presumably the storage charges if they accrue also. But let's go with, and this is fantasy land, but your vehicle gets towed and the towing charge is $100. $10 a day to get it out. Get it out of the impound yard where it got taken, okay? And I used to tow vehicles all the time, took them to the impound yard. Later on, somebody come by the gas station, pay the bill, pay the impound yard, they got their vehicle out. I was involved in those transactions many times as a young man. If the person didn't pay that bill, and as the charges accrued, there was a time frame, it's going to vary from state to state, at what point the person holding the property that they have a lien on because they did something with it that they should get paid for, they can execute on the lien. Most states say that if the item is worth more than the lien, you have to take it and auction it at a public auction to get as much money for it as possible. Use that money to pay off the debt, and if there is an overage, it goes to the car owner. If there is a shortage, then you can still chase the car owner, but you can use the proceeds from the sale of that vehicle to cover the legitimate bill if, in fact, there is one. What is crazy about this case out of Delaware is that it appears that they basically just said carte blanche, you can tow the vehicle, and whatever the vehicle's worth is what you get paid. That's, that's crazy. That's, that's, that is wrong. And the idea that you could take something you have a lien on and auction it, I suspect that idea goes back hundreds of years. Hundreds of years. And the idea that the people in Delaware said, well, we've got to come up with a way to get these vehicles towed. We could ask towing companies to do it, but they might not want to do it for fear they won't get paid. So we'll tell them they can auction the vehicles off to cover the payment. You could have stopped there and said, yeah, and if there's an overage, you give it back to the car owner. But instead they go, oh, we'll let them keep the overage. What? <laughs> Why is that? So of all the stories that have crossed my desk, of, I, I, I try to avoid saying, here's what I think is going to happen. For a variety of reasons. Number one, I don't want to keep have to go back and go, what did I say? I don't remember what I said in that one. And sometimes the winners aren't clear. And sometimes it might take years for this to go someplace. And I don't want to sit here and have to keep track of that kind of stuff. Of all the cases that have crossed my desk, you said, Steve, tell me one where you're pretty certain that someone's going to win on this. Right here is a clear-cut case. If these facts play out as they're described in the lawsuit... And that is 
that your car can be towed. They can dispose of the car to pay for the towing, regardless of the car's value, and keep the overage, and still make you pay separately what you were charged with that led to the towing. That'll get struck down. That will get struck down. I, I don't. I'm going to go out on a limb right now and just say I don't do this very often. That one right there is insanity to me. And the idea that the people of Delaware in government don't understand how crazy that is, I'm surprised it took this long. So like I said, it appears that they have now done this in one year to 2,551 cars and 987 of them were disposed this way. Uh, That's a problem. That's a real crazy problem. So if I had to guess... These people will win the lawsuit. They'll get their injunction, and um, it'll be a mess, but they got to straighten this out because that is one of the craziest, most unfair things I've ever heard of. Delaware residents challenge city's impound and scrap scheme as an unconstitutional private racket. Lawandcrime.com published it. Adam Klasfeld wrote it. Chris sent it to me. Thanks a lot. Questions or comments, put them below. Let's talk to you later. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching Lato's Law. My longing to improve my looks via the body shop is being replaced by my longing to improve my looks via Photoshop.